Awesome, awesome. So guys, team call today. Let me start off by prefacing the call, setting the intentions. The purpose of me doing these calls, of all the calls that we have as a whole are to empower you. I don't wanna waste anybody's time. I don't wanna waste my time. I don't wanna waste your time. I know it's Saturday morning for some of us, afternoon, things like that. And I wanna empower you through these calls by setting effective examples. And when it comes to going over the head game, when it comes to networking with other people, when it comes to marketing yourself, while also providing you with breakthrough perspective from not only my own personal experience, but also other guidance from my, my mentors, other sources, things like that. And my personal focus is to literally just pour into you. That's what the purpose of these calls are, to not only hold us accountable, but to provide you with, I'm gonna take this off because it keep hitting my arm, but to also provide you with, with examples because I don't want to just come on here and train you or coach you or anything like that. I want to provide you guys with applicable examples because that's how we learn. We learn through osmosis. We learn by, by modeling. We learn by, by demonstration. And I want to provide you guys with that. So with that being said, I don't want to take too much of your guys's time. And I also want to pull up this example as well. Um, I actually wrote this in one of the chats yesterday. <clears throat> um, we can we can leverage our chat. We can do things like that by holding each other accountable, leveraging the chats that we have. Any local events going on? Um, we can just kind of move forward from there. So, guys, I want to dive into today. I wrote out a lot. That's why I'm kind of scattered. I usually when I usually do calls and I don't write anything out, I can just go. But today, I, I kind of wrote out a little more in detail because of the stuff that I want to talk about and give you actual examples of what I've been applying into my life. And so something that Steve Greger talked about on his call, uh, I think it was Wednesday morning, you guys are sorry, Thursday morning, if you guys caught his call that he did the Monday or the, the mindset mastery traders call, he went over um, goals. He went over the process and measuring your progress within your process. And he talked about because doing calls like this, getting in front of the right energy, the right associations, the right information. It's about repetition. That repetition creates new neural networks in our brain that allows the repetition to permanently etch itself in our mind, leading to empowering and productive choices that builds and strengthens uh, the habits that we make, the good habits that will allow us to reap the payoff and the benefits of the compound effect. And that's, the, book's in, the book is in my room. And something that I want to talk to you guys about, the whole purpose of today's call, the topic of today's call is plan, do, review. Plan, do, review. Some of you guys have maybe, maybe have heard this topic before. Um, you may have heard me talk about it before. And it's very, very simple. And I want to give you an example of what I've been doing for the last 72 hours. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, but I wanted to preface the call with that because a lot of the times people neglect these calls. People, you know, they don't, they don't hop on the trainings. They don't hop on, on, on the calls that we have throughout the week. But I need you to understand that it's so much more than just a call. It's so much more than, you know, a Saturday morning team get together. It, it's about empowering you. And it's about the repetition of the right energy, of the right association, and the right information consistently because of what's called the compound effect. That book is like my Bible, or I think Steve Greger also talks about um, the book called The Slight Edge. It's that powerful. And because you're, you're mindlessly or you're mindful making subconscious choices, and those choices have a consequence, either good or bad, and those, are, those choices are creating the habits that we have and replicating the life that we continue to live um, and so you're either seeing the benefits or the downfall of the compound effect. And I want you guys to be able to have the, the payoff, the benefits of it. So I want to talk about really quick, and I want to make these calls 20 minutes, 20, 20, 20 to 25 minutes maximum. But the whole, the whole thing, the whole concept of plan, do, review, it's something that if you guys know, heard of the name Christian Jukes, he talked about it. He actually went over it with us in person out here in Arizona about a year ago to the day, to the week. And he, he basically mentioned, you know, having a plan, doing your plan, and reviewing your plan, 
right? And I want to basically preface on this. Most people don't have a plan. Very, very rare will you find people that actually review what they do. But most people um, just do. They don't have a plan. They don't map out what they should be doing. They just kind of go through the process or they, sorry, they go through the motions of what they've been doing all their life. You know, one day turns into a week, turns into a month, turns into a year. And that year turns in years and years and years and decades. And that you know, becomes their life. They don't even, they don't even take time to review the actions that they're taking. So plan do review is something that I've been leveraging in my life and more seriously within the last couple of months, just really being more, uh, being more prominent when it comes to reviewing the actions that I'm taking. So I want to share with you, not necessarily a plan, but I want to, I want to kind of give you examples of what you can implement into your day to day that has been effectively working for myself. And it's not just, you know, I'm, you know, going off a cuff. I'm actually learning it from other mentors that I have, hopping on other trainings, things like that. So questions that I ask myself and I encourage you to ask yourself is, do I have a plan? Do I work my plan? Do I just take action mindlessly without a plan? Do I have a plan that I act on, but maybe I neglect to review my actions and my progress? And so it's basically just going through the, the concept and asking myself if I have those things. And for me, guys, let me pull this up because I, I wrote this out earlier. Um, let me see. Yes. So I basically, I basically wrote myself some information and I want to share it with you guys. So plan to review what we can do individually and as a collective to maximize every single moment of every single day for a more purposeful, meaningful, and fulfilling 2019 and beyond in all areas of our life. Okay. And it starts, it starts with getting real with who we are. It starts with getting real and raw about not only the actions that we're taking, but more importantly, the being, the person that we are and the person that we are consistently becoming based off of our choices that have turned in, that have turned into habits. Okay. So <clears throat> I kind of talked about this. I shared this with you guys that I don't really want to do more trainings um, or coaching. I just want to give you guys examples. I am prefacing the call with a concept that I learned, but more so encouraging you guys to look deeper into it for yourself. That modeling and learning by osmosis is the best way to comprehend something. We do this via demonstration through examples. And so this is the part that I wanted to share with you. By planning out our day-to-day, -day, our week-to-week, -week, our month-to-month, -month, et cetera, based on our goals, okay, we have our goals. I have my goals listed right here. I have my goal card right here. I have another four goal cards that I'm putting in my car that I have on my desk, I have in my room, I have in my bathroom. So I'm constantly, um, I'm constantly seeing it. It's being repeated all in all areas of my life, throughout my apartment, throughout my car, right, at my work, things like that. So it's always in my, it's always, you know, in my focal point. So we have our big goals, like, and I'll tell you guys right now, these goals that I have, they're not 90 day goals. They're not, you know, six month goals. They're, they're goals that I'm accomplishing throughout my 2019, whether that be in, in 90 days and six months, whatever it is. But the goals that you have just, just really scale down to create the work ethic that you should be having on a regular basis. So the bigger the goals that you have, okay, will dictate um, the work ethic, the work ethic that you'll have on a regular basis. So that's how I plan out my day based on the goals that I have. Okay. So planning out our day to day, blah, 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 based on our goals that we scale down to our daily priorities. Now I have a list of daily priorities that I have just a few things. So I have my goals right here and then in my room and then also in my notebook, that I, that I have on my, on my desk that I review every single morning, I have my top priorities. And something that I read in the compound effect is you've got to get real about the productive habits that you, that you are doing or that you should start doing. And then you have to get real about the unproductive habits that you should stop. And it's funny because I have a lot of productive habits that I've been doing or want to start doing you know, since, um, since the last month or so. And then I have unproductive habits to the right. And it's funny cause I have a lot more productive habits 
than unproductive habits. But I've noticed that, for example, and I, I'm guilty of this 100%, and what I'm doing is I'm tallying up how many times I do this. How many times I get on social media and I just start scrolling, or I just start you know, watching other people's stories, and it's so unproductive, it's ridiculous, right? I, I, every time I find myself you know, getting on my phone and going to Snapchat or going to Instagram or going to Facebook and I'm just scrolling. I'm, I'm not like messaging people. I'm not, you know, engaging with other people's stuff with a purpose. I'm just looking just to look, whatever. I tally that. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I already have three tallies from the time I woke up at 6 a.m. this morning. It, <laughs> so it is what it is. And, I, and I'm being more mindful of it. Like, and Alex and I are doing it together so we can hold each other accountable. And I'm just giving you guys examples of what I'm doing. And another thing that I'm doing as well, because, um, wait, yeah, another thing that we're doing together is we're reviewing our day. Now, if you have, you know, uh, a spouse, you know, your husband, your wife, or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, what, you know, leverage that person. Like Alex and I, for example, we go to bed, or before we go to bed, we review our day together. We, we go over, you know, something that we learned for the day, like a lesson. We go over a win that we had together. Um, like I had a personal win. She had a personal win for the day. Like, like yesterday, my win was um, not only going to the gym, but I went through all of my contacts. Or I finished going through all my contacts in my phone. That was a huge goal that I had for myself this week. And I want to break down for you guys what I actually did with that. Um, we go over that, and then we go over gratitude. And the gratitude is like a lot of it has been kind of the same thing that we've been saying, but I've noticed more maturity in the way that we're speaking on it, but it just puts us in a good state. And another thing that Steve Greger has, has actually talked to me about, he talks about how um, when he does gratitude for himself on a regular basis, he won't just say what he's grateful for right now. He says what he's grateful for, you know, like future memories. For example, he has goals that he, that he wants to accomplish maybe, you know, in 2019, right? And so he'll start to be grateful for, for example, my goal on my whiteboard on this goal card right here is to go chairman 100, you know, impact 5,000 lives. It's also to have a six-figure trading account. It's also, I'm just going to be real with you guys and share my goals with you. Hold me accountable. Um, I want to hike. There's a mountain in Arizona called Camelback. I want to hike Camelback, which I have not done in a really, 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 really long time. I want to hike that mountain in 30 minutes. And if you know Camelback, you can look it up. It's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. The last time we hiked it and we did it for speed, we did it, I think, in about 40 minutes going up. 40 minutes going up. So that's my goal, 30 minutes going up. Um, so we did it in about 40 minutes. So I want to beat my time from last time. I want to travel this year to New Zealand, to Japan, and Colombia, along with other places as well. And then I want to create a lifetime account for my parents. And that's something more longer term, but that's something that I want to start this year. Anyways, those are my top, top goals. I'm just giving you guys examples, okay? Those are my top, top goals for this year. And I have it written right here. I have four other ones that I'm putting around my apartment and in my car, so I always see it. It's always on my mind. And so that scales, okay, that dictates my work ethic on a, on a regular basis. I have to be more mindful. I have to make sure that I'm being more productive than, than, un, than unproductive when it comes to my choices, when it comes to the things that I've habitually created for myself, right? And so with that being said, I take action. We take action um, on our priorities, on our top priorities every single day. Like my morning routine is I like as soon as my alarm goes off, I immediately get up. Like I don't even think about it. Like I I used to do that count to five thing. Now it's just it's just automatic. I, I get up, I close the door, and I come out here and I start reading my goals on here and I actually start to write them down too. Because Steve Greger, I have all these notes. Steve Greger talks about how when we write things down, and this is like this is stuff that I that I never used to do. Like doing gratitude, I never used to do it because I didn't see the meaning behind it or I didn't know the benefits of it. And it wasn't until somebody broke it down where I knew why, that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it now. For example, um, handwriting, right? I used to always type up my goals. I used to, you know, just, just little stuff like that that does make a difference, good or bad. And for, for this example, he talked about how your handwriting increases neural plastic, plasticity. Yeah, neuroplasticity. And it, what, it, what I mean by that and what he meant by that is it creates 
new neural networks in your brain, okay? Which allows the repetition, the repetition of you showing up on calls, the repetition of you reading, you know, certain books, certain audios, getting around certain energy, certain associations, certain information on a consistent basis, that allows that repetition to permanently etch itself in your brain. So by, for example, handwriting, that's why they always say take notes, pen and paper, because you'll retain the information more and you can have the ability to go back through it. But by consistently having calls like this where the information is repeated to a certain degree, it starts to etch that energy, that association, that information in your brain. So it becomes permanent. So you start to think differently. Then if you're thinking differently, you have a different perspective. You start to believe you know, your, your, your belief level goes through the roof. You start to act differently. You start to get a different outcome. Anyways, guys, it's full circle. It's full circle. And so let me, uh, let me keep going down here. So our priorities, you guys have your priorities for the day based on your goals, based on your goals that you have set out for yourself. And every morning and every night, I not only have my plan, right? Or sorry, I'm going to get to that part. Every day I have a plan. Like I'll show you, I'll share my screen with y'all. I hope you guys are getting some value out of this. Um, yeah, share my screen. One second. So I have this. I also have this written up on my um, in my notebook, but I like to have it on the computer because I can just easily rewrite stuff. So I have one, as you see, daily routine. This is the one that I change all the time, day to day. And then I have a permanent one that usually stays the same throughout the throughout the day, throughout the week. So this was my, actually did not get up at 7.30, that was yesterday, um, 6 a.m., right? And so I started to go through all of this stuff, and so this is my, this is my plan, you know? This is the stuff that I have to catch up on for the weekend. This is my plan of action for the day. And so it's now me doing what I need to do on a regular basis. And then at the end of the day, this is what I wanted to get to, morning and every single night reviewing our progress within our process so that's what alex and i do if you don't have an accountability partner that lives with you find somebody in the group chat find somebody on the squad that you know is going after big goals big dreams just like you and, and have an accountability partner leverage the chat that you're in as accountability it's powerful because we hold each other accountable like she's going to come home and i'm gonna have three tallies so far from me just like randomly going on social media when I, you know, am not being focused. Steve Greger talked about how the formula for um, creating, you know, the outcome, your reality is focus. Yeah, focus times faith times effort. And if your focus is low, it's going to heavily dictate how successful you're going to be. You're going to be within that area with whatever, you know, whatever you're trying to create for yourself. So let me go back to this. I just wanted to share that with you um, as an example of kind of like what I do on a regular basis. So, yes. So, okay. I'm going to get into this really quick. I want to give you guys a quick example of something that I've been doing for the last three days. Now, how many of you have, I've personally exhausted my warm market. Has everyone on this call exhausted their warm market? You can just type in the chat. If not, no worries. Okay. I have. Like, I, I, I exhausted mine within my first 90 days. <laughs> so, this is something that I have been doing within the last three days. I traveled. I personally traveled a lot this past year. And I had a ton of contacts in my phone that I just had no idea who they were. I had no idea who they were. And so I literally went through, unless I like, like, I know, um, I know Kenny, I know Robert, I know Tony, I know, the, you know, people like that. I'm not going to go and text them because I already, already know them. Um, but for people that I haven't probably talked to in a really long time, or maybe I am unsure of who this person is, I literally went through every single person in my contact. And I said, Hey, is this so-and-so? Is this Steven? Is this Cameron? Is this James? Is this Rachel? Is this, you know, Sarah? Uh, just based on the name that I had on here. Most people, um, they actually had my number saved, which was cool. So they already had my number saved. We just kind of figured out who each other was. So 
after I after I sent that message, because I would do it in I would do it in bursts because the messages can get a little overwhelming. So for example, I would say, hey, for example, hey, th is this Robert? They would be like, most of them are like, yeah, or you know, who's this? That's like the typical response. And I basically said, y'all can change this based on your circumstances, how your last 2018, it was kind of like, a lot of people were like, oh, is this a new year's resolution? And I said, you could say that, right? It's been, it's been something that I needed to do for a while. So I said, hey, it's Abby Poston. I'm going through all my contacts of everyone I met from the past year. And I want to make sure I know who everyone is. I want to make sure I get reconnected. However you guys want to say it, however you guys want to reword it. Everyone was, most people, I'll tell you, only two people were like, like, no, I don't want to be connected or I'm not interested or whatever they said. Only two people out of probably the 500 plus people that I actually messaged. Like, it was ridiculous. So just just go for it. Because because of that, I was able to, um, every person that I talked to, I was able to get their social media or figure out if we were connected or not. So that's just more, more traffic, more engagement, uh, more people that I can reconnect on my social media. And why that's so powerful is they can see me documenting my journey on Facebook, on Instagram. They can watch my stories. So with that being said, you guys can, you guys can try that and just, just be creative with the conversation. So I would say that message and most of them are like, oh yeah, I think we got connected from, you know, X, Y, Z. I, I, I think we got connected from here. And then some of us, we would just have a little conversation. Oh yeah, I'm in Arizona. They're in Cali. They're in, you know, wherever it may be. And because it's the new year, you can easily just say, you know, happy new year. It's good to reconnect with you. And then what I say is, are you also, or are you on Facebook or Instagram? That's like literally the last message message that I'll usually send them. And most of them, majority of them say, yes, I have Instagram. Here's my user. I have Facebook. Here's my, you know, here's my link, whatever. Um, some of them have been like, no, I don't actually use social media. So I'll just keep in contact. I'll just keep them as a contact on my phone, but I know exactly who they are now. I know their first or last name and where they're from. That's so important where they're from, because if you're traveling and you're, and you're trying to build a global business, it's important that you know where people are coming from. I don't know. That was just like a big thing for me. Anyways, I wanted to share that with you. I, I, I highly encourage all of you guys to do that. Go through your contacts because if you're afraid to talk to somebody, why are they in your phone? Why are they in your phone? It don't have the intention of I've, like the people that I'm talking to, every single person I'm going to sign up because people can feel that energy. You have to come from a genuine place. You have to come with the right pure intentions when you're talking to people because they can sense that a hundred percent. And that's why I mentioned in one of my messages that I wrote out uh, yesterday, yesterday is why we have this in the first place like seeing the bigger picture seeing the longer term vision with what we have understand this is my perspective this is my vision we are building a community through every relationship through every person through every friendship that we are forming that we are developing we are building a worldwide global community that's what this is about and, and we just so happen to be at the right place at the right time and being able to provide something. We're not just having a friendship or a relationship. We can actually provide somebody with a solution. We can actually provide somebody with a skill set that has the ability to set them free. Does that make sense? Like so many people, like why is a community important? Because it allows people to feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. It allows people to feel alive. It allows people to feel like they belong. It allows people to feel like they're, they're welcome somewhere. They can be a part of something. That's, that's a community, guys. Like That's the power of this entire thing. So we're building a community with every single person, with every single relationship that we're forming and we're developing through a skill set that has the ability to set people free. Um, so... I, I briefly want to share this to with you guys as well, and then I'll kind of wrap it up. Um, shout out to Robert really quick. He's been connecting me with some really, really amazing people, uh, specifically overseas. And I, I got a message from this girl he got us connected with in a group chat. I believe, I believe she's in, based on her message, she said she's in Pakistan. And I want to read this to you because I want to show you the, the, the depth of this, the, of how, 
much more this actually is and, and just just expand your perspective for a second so just just bear with me she sent me this this uh this message so she said hi abigail thank you so much for connecting me to your circle my real name is xyz so her name on facebook is actually not her real name it's something else and so i'll get to that in a second she said i've done a bachelor's of science in english linguistics and literature i am basically from this town one of the most remotest areas of pakistan it is sort of a travel area i'm the only female in my family who's been to university and studied in a co-ed environment because the society where i'm living doesn't like to educate and empower females um, she said, although my parents are not educated, I'm very lucky that they are supportive to me. I want to change the mentality of people that girls are not only to serve husbands and, and do home chores and that they can actually do more than that. She said, when I was a child, I thought that the whole world treated females like this. But when I grew up, I came to know that it's not that it's not actually like that. I wanted to see that that world where a girl can easily go to have a cup of coffee at any time. She can talk to a man without being judged by someone. Moreover, she, so she said, maybe you are confused um, as to why my, I didn't show my real name on Facebook, and that's because I'm not allowed to use Facebook, I guess, whatever, whatever that is um, over there. So she just chose to have a different name. Really nice to talk to you. Anyways, I wanted to share that with you because it's so much bigger. It is so much bigger than what we think it is. It is so much bigger than, you know, maybe the little problems that we have. And I'm not trying to discredit your problems because we all have problems and it's based on our own perspective and what we've already experienced. So recognizing that there's a bigger world out there with people that actually need this. The skill set's amazing. We all know that. The skill set's empowering. It's enriched us. It's educated us and it's financially increased our life, or if you're, you know, you're newer, it's you're on the road to financial increase, financial abundance. And understanding that blessing as a, as a whole, we have the ability to bless other people. So when you take yourself out of the situation and you start putting people at the forefront of how special, how magical, how empowering this can be to them, I mean, your world starts to change. You can actually impact people in Africa. Shout out to Robert again for, for, for getting me in a group chat with somebody over there. We have a call tomorrow. Actually, tonight. Sorry, later tonight, their time tomorrow. And I'm just really excited about all the potential people that not only myself, but you guys can go out and start to communicate with, that you can start to, to build a relationship with and communicate with. Guys, there was a guy that I was talking to the other day. Um, he's from, I think he's from, Nigeria. I think he's from Nigeria. And he was telling me that he just does not have the money to do this. And what I told him, and you guys can, you guys can leverage this as well, because he's, he has been doing what I told him to do. I said, Hey, you know, I, I, let me read this to you because Alex actually wrote this for me. It was really good. So when somebody tells you they don't have the money for this, you know, they give you an objection. For example, this is something that I am starting to send out to people because you have to understand when it comes to this, this whole thing, it's about timing. If somebody is not ready to do this, I am not going to want to force them to get involved because it's just, I, I've been there, guys. It is a waste of not only their time, but my time because they cheat themselves out of committing to the process and understanding what it actually takes to do this. If somebody is not ready maybe they mean need more clarity that's a little different but if somebody is like genuinely not ready to commit to this i don't want you to get started if you can't even commit for 90 days six months do not even sign up let's talk in 30 days and let's see where you are okay like i'm just prefacing that right now because that's something that i used to do i used to if somebody said that they weren't ready or they didn't have the money right now, like they legitimately probably did not have the money, why am I going to try to force them to come up with the money right now when they don't have it? They're not mentally ready. They're not in the right capacity. So we have to, like, we have to understand timing. So something that I, that I say that I've been messaging people is, you know, hey, so-and-so, hey, fam, whatever you guys want to say, appreciate you just, just for letting them know and communicating with me that they don't have the money. Most people just ignore you, right? Most people, like, if they don't have the money or whatever, they just ignore you. So appreciating them, appreciate you um, for letting me know. I'm here to help. 
I'm here to help you make this possible. Let's start by setting a goal date for when you will be ready to start. I know how powerful it is to multiply the money you already have. Do you have a time frame in mind? So there's no pressure. Like I don't imagine if guys, I put myself in their, in their position. I don't like to be pressured. I don't like to be told what to do. You don't like to be pressured. You don't like to be told what to do unless you are specifically asking for advice, unless you are specifically um, asking a question or whatever it may be, then that's the, that's, that's, that's kind of the only leeway where you have where somebody else can tell you that. So that's a message that I, sh that I send to people when they give me an objective. So I want to briefly share with you and I'll cut it off. I know I'm really over my 20 minutes, what I said, but the guy from Nigeria, I basically told him, I basically told him if he doesn't have the money right now to start connecting me with friends, with family, with, you know, people in his local community that are interested in what we have, that are interested in, in what we do and creating that financial prosperity for themselves, creating that financial abundance. So what did he do? The next day I got put into three group chats with his friends. And then I had another couple people that he was like, Hey, I'm friends with so-and-so. He told me to reach out to you um, for Forex information or whatever they said. So it was like, that's powerful. So he got me connected just as a total of five different people, five different people just within the next 48 hours of me talking to him. Imagine what you guys can do. And I, I was thinking deeper with this. And I was like, what if, you know, they all came together, five or six of them, I don't know, and created one account together. Okay. And they were able to start sharing this with people, not just in their local community, but globally so that they can create a residual income, have an extra $600 coming in every single month where that money goes towards their, their little circle, their, their little community that they're creating. And they can start to help other people get a, get a subscription and, and have membership to the platform. I was just thinking it, it, I was just thinking about this in a different light on how that can be organized when they all come together and you create an empowering community. It's so ridiculously powerful. But when you start to look at this as in a different light, instead of I'm just talking to new people every single day, look at the relationship that you can cultivate with that person. I can't even begin to tell you the cool, the cool conversations that I was having with all the people that I was messaging through my contacts. It's amazing. So guys, I want to leave you off with this. Okay. Um, when you talk to people, talk about vision, talk about, you know, how associations, the power of, you know, the law of associations are so powerful. Talk about, you know, mindset, head game, the importance of, you know, having the right education and, and guidance, consistency, the compound effect, commitment, because you're leading with a longer term vision and you're not leading with hype and you know instant gratification that's how people leave that's how people get themselves cheated out of the process they don't recognize the commitment but if you can pre-train them before they get in to recognize and appreciate what this actually takes and in the longer term vision of how this can benefit them okay through the bigger lens it's powerful it is powerful and that's why like for me i'm recognizing that and it, it's it it's taking me a little longer to see to see a sign up or, or see somebody coming in, whatever it may be. But that doesn't matter to me because I know the compound effect is working in my favor. Right now, it may not look like much, but watch where six months down the road is I'm going to be. Watch where 12 months down the road you're going to be. We're going to be. The compound effects just, just escalates from there. So remember, you are pre-training your people, your customers, before they even get started. And if they lack the mindset, or at least the coachability to develop the mindset, then it'll be a complete waste of time for not only myself, but themselves, both parties. So lastly, I know, let me just share this with you guys. I appreciate y'all for being in the call. If you're still in the call, um, must be because you're very loyal to me <laughs> or in the information or you're actually getting value. But three things I look for when it comes to working with people, because guys, you have to recognize you're pouring yourself into that person. You're giving your time, your energy, your attention to them. Let's not waste any time, okay? Let's build valuable, productive, cohesive, loyal relationships with people. So three things that I look for when it comes to working with somebody is their coachability, 
their ability to learn and their ability to recognize where they want to go and also be cognizant of what they that what they would have to give up to get to that point so coachability they're self-driven they're hungry right and they're massively massively grateful i don't want to work with anybody that's ungrateful like they, they won't value what's in front of them. You know what I mean? So I believe you all embody those qualities and I appreciate that. Um, it allows us to work together and, and truly be able to create something special and see the bigger picture with this. And I'm just going to say this really quick. No, nope, never mind. There's less than a minute. All I was going to say is if you get me on a three way call, guys, make sure that they see an IML overview. I was on a call that was way too long yesterday. The guy didn't even see an IML overview. And I thought that I was under the impression that he did. So, Always make sure that they see an IML overview. I appreciate y'all. Big, um, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Have a happy Saturday. I'll have the recording out. Peace out. Love always.